Hi. Now, in this example, we've got to express 6 cos theta plus 8 sine theta in the form r cos of theta minus alpha, where r is greater than 0 and alpha is an angle greater than 0 but less than pi upon 2. And it's measured in radians. And we've got to give the value of alpha to three decimal places. And then it will go on to ask us some other parts about this function p theta, which we'll talk about later on in the video. But for now, just uh, if you'd like to have a go at this and you haven't done so already, just give you a few moments to pause the video and have a go. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Now, these kind of expressions are very common in trigonometry. And just as a reminder, there's a series of these. And if you want any further help with these identities, just click on the link that you should see here. And it will take you back to the video tutorials on this. But I'm assuming that you're familiar with these identities. And for us, we've got this one here, 6 cos theta then plus 8 sine theta, which has essentially got this form here, a cos theta plus b sine theta. And it's identical to r cos theta minus alpha, where r is equal to the root of a squared plus b squared, and alpha equals the inverse tan of b over a. And that's the form that we've got to express this in. So that's our starting point anyway. So if we just copy this down, what we've got is that 6 cosine theta, or cos theta for short, plus 8 sine theta is identical to the form a cos theta plus b sine theta. And that means that we can see that a corresponds to the 6, so a equals 6, and b equals the 8. So we can see from this that to get r here, r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So therefore we have r equals the root of 6 squared plus 8 squared. Well that's 36 plus 64, square root of 100, which is 10. And notice I'm not writing plus or minus here. What we take is always the positive value. It says up here as well, where r is greater than 0. OK, so that's our value for r. What we need to do now is just think about working out what alpha is. So what we'll do is we'll just section that off there. And for alpha, alpha equals the inverse tan of b over a. So alpha equals the inverse tan then of our b value, which is 8, divided by a, which is 6. Now we're working in radians here, OK? I'm often asked, how do I know when an angle's in radians? Well, normally, if it's in degrees, it would say degrees here. But because there's no symbol here, it's in radians. And also, using pi also is a clue that it's in radians. Anyway, so make sure your calculator is in radians mode. Do the inverse tan then of 8 over 6, and what you should find you get is 0.92729, and so on. Okay. Now we're asked to give the value of alpha to three decimal places. So if we do that, that's going to be 0.927. OK, 0.927, I'll just put three decimal places there, 3dp for short. So where does this take us then? Well, we've got everything we want now. This expression OK, can be written in the form r cos theta minus alpha. We've got our values of r and alpha, so we can just say, therefore, 6 cos theta plus 8 sine theta is going to be identical to r, which is 10, cosine, or cos for short, of theta minus alpha. So I'm going to put 0.927 there. All right. Now, in the next part, OK, we've got to 
or we're given this function p of theta which equals 4 all over 12 plus 6 cos theta plus 8 sine theta for theta greater than or equal to 0 radians but less than or equal to 2 pi radians and what we've got to do is first of all calculate the maximum value of p of theta and then go on to give the value of theta at which this maximum occurs. And this is a very common type of question, trying to work out max and min values of functions when coupled with this type of expression. Now, to do this, we've got to see that this expression, 6 cos theta plus 8 sine theta, is up here. We've expressed it in this format, so we ought to take that opportunity of using it. So what we've got here then in part one is that p of theta okay, can be rewritten then as equaling 4 divided by 12 plus, and instead of 6 cos theta plus 8 sine theta, I'm writing it as this. That is 10 cos of theta minus 0.9 to seven radians, okay? Now how does this help us get the maximum value of p of theta? Well, the thing is we've got a fraction here with a constant on the top, constant here, but a variable quantity here. This is going to change as theta changes. And being a fraction, if we're looking for the maximum value in a fraction, we want the denominator here to be as small as possible. And this is the only term, as I say, that varies. So to get this as small as possible, what we've got to remember is that to get maximum value of p of theta, cosine of any angle goes between minus 1 and 1. We should be familiar with the graph and the function of cos theta. It always goes between minus 1 and 1. So the smallest value we can get here is when cosine of this angle gives us minus 1. So we'll just say that here. That is when cosine of theta minus 0 0.927 is minus 1. And so therefore, our maximum value of p of theta will equal 4 divided by 12 and then we've got plus 10 multiplied by negative 1 so in other words minus 10 so 4 divided by 2 gives us 2 and that's the maximum value then we can get now for part 2 we're asked to find then the value of theta which this maximum occurs well that maximum occurs when the cosine of the angle theta minus 0.927 radians equals minus 1. So if you were to inverse cosine both sides, we would see that we would get our minus 1 when this angle is pi radians, the equivalent of 180 degrees. You should be familiar with that anyway, even without using a calculator, because I suppose I could squeeze it in just here. We've got a bit of space. If you were to sketch the cosine graph, okay, let's say y equals cos theta, we know it goes between 1 and minus 1. It looks something like this. Starting here, dropping to 0 at 90 degrees, at 180 degrees or pi radians, it's negative 1. Then it's 0 at 270 degrees, back at 1 at 360 degrees, the equivalent of 2 pi radians. So here's our lowest value at pi radians, the equivalent of 180 degrees. So all we've got to say is that this occurs then when theta minus 0 0.92, and I'm not going to write 0 0.927, I'm going to take the unrounded version here, 927 to 9 and so on equals pi radians. So to get theta, all we need to do is add 0.92729 and so on to pi. And if we do that, we get 4.0688 and so on. 
And if we give this say to three decimal places, then theta is equal to 4.07, okay? To three decimal places, 3dp. So I hope this gives you an idea then on questions like this. Don't forget, do go back on my website if you're unsure or want more problems like this. Just click on this link up here. It'll take you back to how I prove these and also some further questions uh, or examples on them. Okay.